My name is Arnaud Ovara. Uh, I am part of the Spotfire project management team. Uh, more specifically, I'm responsible for our mapping capabilities or location intelligence capabilities. Well, I'll talk a bit about what Spotfire is bringing for location intelligence, and then my colleague Peter Shaw from our data science team will showcase some Spotfire demos so you can, you can see how to leverage those capabilities um, in the cloud. Location intelligence, or, or LI, you may uh, you probably have heard this term already. I'll try to define it. Um, well, basically, LI is the idea of taking all your, all your data and adding a geographical context to this data to turn that data into insights. LI is the use of location uh, to help you drive insights. In a, in a sense, um, location intelligence or modern location intelligence is, can be seen as a new generation GIS that enables you to serve not only um, the traditional GIS experts, but also the data scientists, the data analysts, business users, and also developers. If you're a data analyst or a business user, what you're expecting from, for this type of tool is to be able to create maps quickly as a self-service, to get insightful maps in just um, a few clicks. As a data scientist, you want the same capabilities, but this time you want to build more advanced visualizations or spatial features using your own functions or models applied into your map visualizations. And then if you're a developer, you want to access an open API, well-documented, that lets you create easily your custom map applications. With Portfolio, that's what we do. Um, we are trying to serve all, all those new audience for spatial analytics. Spotfire is basically looking for location intelligence for everyone. Could be for the casual user, the data scientist, the analyst, or the developer. So most of the time when we speak about location intelligence at TIPCO, we refer to it as Spotfire Geoanalytics. Spotfire Geoanalytics automates the process of creating maps. Um, in just one click or two, you get a map that you can browse and analyze. But you can create more advanced maps by including different layers of data from different data sources that will give you more context uh, to your data and that will help you browse the data and find new insights um, through location. You can bring GIS data and map services to Spotfire. And you can even set your map visualization to be rendered using your preferred uh, coordinate system. So you make sure that you get the same accuracy, the same precision, in your mapping spot layer as you get in, as you're, you're used to have in your more complex GIS tools. Lastly, um, you can build fully customized visualizations in spot layer through the use of data functions. Peter will talk about it, data functions that most of, that are shared through the community, for example, or by using location services that we provide. about location services. We currently have three, mainly three um, REST APIs uh, that you can use um, to do more advanced analysis of your data or more precise analysis of your data. Um, starting with the geocoding API that offers address level geocoding, reverse geocoding and address fencing um, with a nearly global geographic coverage. Then the routes and distance API, which includes optimizing routes between multiple waypoints. And an API to compute trail areas or catchment areas around the location based on a distance or based on a time to go. Those capabilities or APIs can be used standalone by consuming directly the API through a JavaScript library that you can integrate into your own apps on your own website, or through different TICO products that include Spotfire for location intelligence, JasperSoft for map reporting, stream-based live view if you want to get real-time maps, and MGM Clarity if you want to do address cleansing. So we do a lot um, for you in, in terms of LI. And if you go to TIPCO community, you, here you will be able to learn 
the basics, how to create maps in Spotfire, how to use our services, and you'll be able to learn how to create custom visualizations on top of maps, custom map visualizations, or custom features related to, to spatial. I really encourage you to, to visit, go visit this page, uh, community.tipco.com, under the wiki section, we have a, a big page with lots of information about how to create maps, how to find, where to find data functions to do more, scripts um, to create new visualizations and um, new features uh, for your maps. So with Spotfire uh, Geoanalytics, we are trying, um, what we are trying to do is to bring location intelligence to everyone um, the easy way, without, without the learning curve of uh, GIS, which sometimes could be costly for an expert. Um, Still, um, but still we want to provide the depth and the analytical capabilities that you need to do predictions and optimizations um, through locations. But the Azure Analytics is um, a development focus for us for many years now and we won't stop. Last estimate from Gartner, they estimate 20 billion connected devices by 2020. So as you can imagine, more and more companies are looking to get insight from those data flows. And it is easy to think about the potential of location intelligence with this data for smart cities, connected vehicles, IoT. So we are continually updating Spotfire in that direction to support current and future location intelligence use cases. Basically, Every new Spotfire um, release contains new um, features related to, to GEO, and we will continue. Now, I'll give my idea to Peter, who will present some demos of Spotfire GEO in the cloud. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, great. Thanks, Arno. And let me uh, share my screen and flip over to my... Uh, presentation here. So um, good. So basically, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, three different topics today. I'll be showing actually three different um, demonstrations. Um, the first one is basically a fairly simple, just a contour visual, visualization, but it's, it's intended to show you how this works in the cloud and how you can simply, you know, download some assets from the exchange that Arno just showed um, and use it in your own um, applications. The second one is basically purely in the cloud. I'll be just going to the cloud and building out a um, example completely in the cloud. Um, so if you don't own a copy of uh, Spotfire locally, you can upload your data to the cloud and um, do some cool stuff there. And then the third one is a, um, a more uh, completed analysis of trade areas. Um, I'll be kind of walking through some of the essential components there. So there's actually a couple of um, a couple of data functions written in, uh, for, for R, the R language with the tear um, engine. And, you know, Spotfire can handle, can, can basically integrate with, um, you know, Spotfire data science, um, Statistica, this Python data functions too. So there's a wide range. I'll be showing some tear data functions here today um, as examples. Good, so the first one um, is basically going, um, if you could our exchange site, figure out where this is. So here's our typical exchange, and um, this is the public site. If you filter on Spotfire templates, um, here's the data function I'll be talking about, the, the map, you know, contour data function that Arno just um, kind of alluded to. So in the, the way it's been so far, you can, um, you know, download stuff for your website, for your own, for your own use. Um, what's kind of new now is there's a, a button you can push to try the cloud version immediately. So you can just say, hey, you know, what does this data function do? Um, so obviously the application here is if you have some point locations on your map um, that might have some third variable. So you've got X and Y, latitude, longitude, and some other variable Z, which might be um, some kind of geological parameter, it might be, you know, oil production, it might be, you know, some kind of environmental thing, temperature, whatever. This allows you um, just just the uh, the colors by themselves. I turn this off for a second. Just the colors by themselves of the points show 
kind of a su suggestion of patterns, but the, the reason to use contours is to um, really try to generalize the patterns you see here. So you, you're not like looking at the specific point patterns, but um, you're trying to let the machine algorithms do um, do their work and actually do a smooth surface and actually show you these areas that your eye might kind of miss um, if you just stare at the points themselves. So you know, drawing contours is a great way to take a fairly complicated um, pattern and you know not be distracted by the actual locations of the points themselves, but to look at the underlying um, patterns of the third variable z, which is hopefully independent of the actual location there. So you're trying to understand how z varies without being distracted by x and y. Um, so to actually use this, so, you know, to go back to the exchange, um, you can download um, a component to your own uh, desktop, which I'll show you right here. So here's actually, here's a local version of Spotfire on my desktop. I've got um, pretty much the same data, x, y, and z um, loaded up. And I'll start by making a map. So uh, if you look on the data panel over here, I've got let, um, latitude and longitude are both collected underneath this location um, grouping. And what that means is this, if I go to the um, panel here, just insert a, a map chart, it'll know, hey, I know I've got enough information right now to use that to draw a map chart. So there you go. So it's, it's basically using the location information and it's, it's grabbed another variable here that's just one left, so it's, it's Z. So Z is being used to um, change, in this case, the size. All right, so that's, that's your typical starting point. <clears throat> and so what you might want to do, again, to, to actually imp implement this uh, contour, I'm going to first actually mark um, some of these points just to enable me to add some interactivity later on. So I've got the points marked. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually insert the data function that I've downloaded from our typical exchange, right? So you want to use this, and this might be your own arbitrary Spotify um, file. So all I'll do is I'll go to do it in the insert menu, down to data function, and um, there's a from file option. And this file right here, the .sfd, the Spotify function definition file, that's the one I've just downloaded from the, um, from the website. And I'm all set to go ahead and, and actually um, insert this into my Spotfire file. So X I'll use um, longitude. I'm going to actually be careful to um, check the marking here. I'm also going to check this refresh automatically um, checkbox there, just what, just what refreshes when I mark things. Y is going to be uh, latitude. Make sure I also ch check the marking box. And Z is just the third column, which is just Z in this case. Um, and uh, smooth and scale is just a number between um, 0 and 1. It'll just basically type in uh, 0 0.5 is a pretty good number to use for that. So those are the inputs, pretty easy to use. And then the output is just going to be a new data table. Um, the suggested name is contra lines, which sounds pretty good to me. And um, you can see down here it's running and it's finished. Nothing has changed on the map because I haven't added it yet. So to add the information to the map, um, let me close this up actually. To add the information to the map, what I can do, go back to the data panel, <clears throat> and now I can actually see that contour lines as a separate table in the, in the um, data panel. And just the exact same way as the latitude and longitude were appearing in this location group, I've got this um, field called geometry. And I can actually just grab this and drag it over into the map, and this little highlight appears on the far right-hand side. If I just drop it in there, it kind of knows what to do. It shows these kind of like light gray lines. So I can you know, go back and ed obviously edit this, make them nice and thick and colored and so forth. But you know, the, the upshot is if I just highlight a new area, it'll um, update those lines. And it's, it's a nice interactive, um, nice interactive system I can, you know, um, uh, yeah, use it to, <laughs> I can use it to study the patterns of my data and I can color code them. I can, you know, obviously you can color code the points and the, the lines in the same kind of way to see, um, to understand the patterns. If I save this to my local file, I can go out to the cloud and I can open this up and run this just the same way in the cloud, just as, as we saw in the exchange. Um, all right, so that's basically it for this.
parts of the demo. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the, um, I'm actually going to go back to the cloud. And um, so here I am in the cloud. And I can basically launch my cloud version of Spotfire Analyst. So I'm going to be, um, in this case, pretending I don't have Spotfire on my desktop. <clears throat> I'm just going to be using the cloud version of Spotfire to upload a file and do some analysis up in the cloud. So, um, and you know, when it opens up, it says, okay, it's actually got a little library of, of um, um, you know, ex existing analyses, some, um, some sample da data and so forth. In this case, I'm just going to actually make a new analysis just from scratch, all right? And when I get this um, button, it basically says, okay, where do you want to use data from? So there's a lot of different sources of data um, that are available. In this case, I'm just going to choose a local file. So I can easily upload actually a local file from my desktop. Here it is, actually. So um, this actually is a file of California census. Um, there's some demographics. Demographics three means there's actually three um, demographic variables I've prepared. So I've, I've prepared this data set uh, to match um, it's actually census tracts in California. So um, <clears throat> it'll basically be able, it'll let me explore a couple of demographic fields um, for all the different census tracts, and there's a lot of them, obviously, in California. Um, the census tracts are actually a, a unit, um, it's actually engineered to provide a roughly similar population across all the census tracts. So when you look at the census tract data, it's kind of nice because the numbers of people are roughly the same across census tracts, so um, you can look at the statistics that way. So, okay, again, I've got a location populated. This is actually the shape file. Shape file is right from the U.S. Census uh, group, so you can get that from there. So in the cloud, it's a little bit different. I've got a little dip different set of um, menus up here. Here's one where I want to add um, a visualization, and in this case, I can just add a map chart. And again, because the location has information there. It knows, oh, this is a shape file. I'm going to go ahead and draw shape files for, for California, all the, all the census tracts in California. <clears throat> and so I can color code it. I've also got the, here are my three variables, the age, the, the median age, the um, percentage of college education, the, the median income. And um, I can actually color code by each of these, these three things. So if I want to study the broad patterns of variables and these these are again this is from the u.s census so the census tells reports the median age um across different census tracts and everything and you can kind of study this and look for patterns and so, so forth and um maybe choose a different variable here um you know maybe the median income or maybe the um you can see it's kind of clustered near the urban areas and maybe the college education so there's interesting interesting patterns already right so um what I would like to do is I like to combine these in a bit more sophisticated way. So I'm going to actually use a, um, a, a tear, a typical enterprise runtime for R, uh, basically it's R script, um, but it's a tear data function. I'm sorry, it's a tear expression, even simpler than data function. Just go ahead and use a tear expression. And what I can do is, um, let me actually call out my uh, editor. So here's, here's my tear expression. So it's a, it's a tear integer a function of, in fact, actually there's a, um, some documentation for this. So here's the, here's the documentation for how you use this function, this, this expression, this Spotfire expression language function, which calls out to tear, and there's only two arguments, is a tear script, and there's Spotfire column names. It's pretty simple to use. Um, so here's my expression in quotation marks. That's actually the entire R script. So it's, it's a complete R script right there. And it's using the k-means function. Um, it's using three inputs, input one, two, and three. The four here is I'm going to ask, ask for four clusters, and this just ask, this just extracts the uh, element there. So because I've asked for three inputs, I need to supply three um, Spotfire columns there. Anyway, that's that's the expression I'm going to use. Now I could, for example, go in here and color this by um, a custom expression. I could just type that in. If I put the angle brackets in, it'll turn it into a, a categorical variable. I'm not going to do that, and the reason is I'm going to actually um, 
I'm going to use it in more than one location. So I'm going to use this in both the uh, map visualization and also some more an analysis. So I want to actually insert a calculated column with that expression. Now the way you do this in the cloud version, again, things are a little bit different, is you open up the data panel to see, uh, you know, here's my, actually here's my, all my different shape files for the different census tracts. And um, if I scroll to the right, I can see all my information there, but here's my three variables here. These are actually all, um, by the way, these are all uh, standardized to have zero mean and standard, you know, unit standard deviation. So it's set up to do clustering without having one overpower the rest. So um, there's a couple of blue elements here. I can add rows or add columns, but in this case, this one is called add calculated column. So if I do that, I'll just paste in my script. Um, it's got some color coding there, which is kind of nice, call it cluster. And that's basically all there is to do. And when it's finished running, it'll um, update and that cluster number will be at the very end there. So here's my cluster, which is actually a string variable, not a numeric, so it'll appear as a category. So here's my cluster number, that's brand new. I've added a column there. And um, I can go ahead and actually color this by that brand new cluster identifier I just created on the fly. And when I do that, it'll show some interesting clusters there, colors and so forth. And um, it's funny because every time we do this, it's, it, there's a random element to this. So it's, it's um, a little bit different, but the, the broad patterns are exactly the same. So there's basically a um, one group of folks lives in kind of rural areas in the, at the coast, maybe um, another group lives in this agricultural area that the Central Valley. There's another group living in um, the green markings are people who live in the more urban areas and so forth. So you can see some patterns, right? And you can say, okay, there's some interesting stuff going on there. Um, so scoot this around. You want, you want to know, obviously the next thing you want to know is, okay, so what does this actually mean? And that's why I added the column and I just simply made this a color by cluster. So I can, what I can do is I can take that cluster and do some analysis. What I'm going to do here is actually add a new visualization um, make a bar chart to understand better what these clusters actually mean. So I like to basically, um, this is kind of crazy large here. I want to analyze this by both by cluster and by the, by the three variables I've used. So I'm going to start by just getting rid of the cluster over here. And on the Y axis, I'm going to actually um, select my columns here to include the, the names of my variables here. So, um, here's my college, age, and income. Those are my three variables. I'm going to add those to the analysis there. Instead of sum, it's going to be best to use um, the average instead of that. So there we go. And for the for here, I'm going to actually use the um, the column names. And not very exciting there, but if I color this now by the um, by the cluster it this will this this is this will come together um all right there you go so it, it's almost there and i need to do one more thing which is this actually add a trellising value so again we're working in the cloud with this different set of tools here and everything i've been able to access the um x and y axes simply by my usual right click and the color by now to get to the, tr to the trellis it's a bit deeper so i'm going to have to either right click and get to this properties icon or I can get the exact same properties icon up on the uh, toolbar there. In either case, this gives you pretty much all, all, the, all the other stuff you need, like here's trellis here. So I can go ahead and put in my rows by, cl by, by cluster and um, that should basically allow me to finally see the, the kind of broad patterns. First thing I'm going to check is that the colors are the same which they are, um, which is obviously they are. So. Um, this kind of lets me see the, the broad patterns, right? So um, again, the colors here, the, the top group is all the blue um, areas, which are, again, the blue ones on the map, the green areas of the, the green ones on the map, and the red ones and so forth. And the, the three different columns here show the um, averages for each, each of these groups here. So the college, the average college education is on the left-hand side here, uh, the green, Folks have a higher than average. Blue folks have a lower than average. Um, 
the next one over is the age. So the uh, the red folks have the oldest, are the oldest folks around. Um, you know, they hang it on the coast, maybe in retirement perhaps, or the rural areas. Um, you know, and then the um, the blue actually have the uh, the youngest ages of all. So those are um, folks in this ag more agricultural area there. And the, the green um, is probably best characterized by their, you know, they have above average college education, a bit older, and they're also, the, they have the highest income of all. So the green areas are the ones where the, um, those are the ones where you see them in the, in the more urban um, environments and, you know, the high tech areas and so forth. And if you scoot around to um, some of these other areas, you can see the same kind of patterns in, in other metropolitan areas. So you can really get an overview both, you know, geographically, and you can also look directly over here and see what was going on in terms of um, the demographics. Again, this is all public data from the U.S. Census, both the shape files and the um, and the demographics. But I've built this out completely in the cloud. I simply uploaded one data set, but I've I've basically created this from scratch in the cloud, which shows you what you can do in the cloud, which is pretty pretty wild, pretty cool. All right, I've got a few minutes left. I'm going to um, end up with a third, um, a third example, which which is to say I'm going to go to the Bay Area, but I'm look at a example here, which is involving some of the stuff that Arnaud was talking about, and both well, well, some of the um, specific data functions to look at the trade areas and the um, the geofencing kind of stuff. So the, the hypothesis here is that I've, I've got a series of locations around, in this case, the Bay Area, and I want to perhaps open a new store somewhere, or it might be a new, you know, it might be a new fitness center, or it might be a new daycare, or some kind of, a, you know, like a dry cleaner. You know, there's a lot of brick and mortar um, things that are basically still pretty essential, even, even in today's, <laughs> Um, sort of high-tech, you know, point-and-click kind of world. You still have to go to the brick-and-mortar thing, like, you know, fit, fitness center or swimming pool or whatever, or, you know, or a store, grocery store. So you might want to know, here's some locations I, went, I can possibly choose from. I've got the same kind of um, census data available. So what, what can I um, use from the census data? Actually, I should show you what I've got here. Um, open my, my data panel. I've got um, things like, you know, the median age, income, percentage of people 18 plus or 65 plus, households with children, households with college graduates. I've got a few things there I can kind of look at. And if I go to my layers and look at the, um, the census track, so I've actually got this wired up to color code this by, um, in this case, the income, but I've got the same exact census tracks available on this presentation as well. Now, I'd like to go to the next step to say, okay, this is great, but I want to know, you know, all, all, all the people around each of these locations, who is likely to go there, and what are their characteristics? I'd like to kind of merge these two data sets together, right? So one starting point is to say, okay, we have the census tracks, but actually the, the centers is also available as a separate layer. So you see these little black dots. Those are the... Um, so not the exact centers, but they're a point that is inside each of the polygons. So there's a polygon, and there's these little dots, which is going to be inside there. So I need to find, you know, it, it basically is boils down to which of these little black dots is close to each of these um, possible store locations. And this is where the, um, you know, the, the geoanalytics location intelligence, you know, stuff comes in because we can actually look for the trade areas. And I just go ahead and turn those on because th these are all pre-computed, right? So I've used the, um, the GeoAnalytics web service. Um, so if I can bring up um, information about that. Um, do, 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 do. I think it's, uh, oops, it didn't work. Um, there's a, um, so here's our, here's our location analytics. Um, helpful web page with some animations and so forth. But on this page, there's descriptions about the typical geoanalytics and um, all the different 
REST APIs and so forth, but this one talks about trade area. This is exactly what I used um, to find the trade areas. You basically give it parameters like, um, do you want to find it by distance or by time? What kind of a, um, how far or how long, driving or walking? So it's a, again, it's a REST service. So that's basically how that works. Um, if I can get back to my example. So that's what I called to get these polygons to show up. <clears throat> All right, so that's the first little section. This, the next section, um, there's actually two data functions here. Um, just take a look at these. I've got um, the get driving distances one, and the next one is to actually find which of the census tract locations are inside the trade areas, and that's going to be the, the points in polygons or the geofencing um, uh, data function. And, you know, these all have their um, input parameters and so forth, but base, basically for the trade areas, I'm asking for a, a two-mile driving radius to each of these points. So um, it basically go ahead and it makes these polygons. I can then <clears throat> um, tag each of the census tracts with that location. If I, if I turn on my, um, my data panel, open this up. So here's my, my data I'm working with, um, all the different you know, median age percentages. These are actually not um, standardized, so that the actual, the, the real deal. And then the ID here, this ID is a new column I've created from that geofencing data function I just ran. So that name here, the Berkeley, Oakland, et cetera, et cetera, those are the names of the, um, of the, of the um, store, right? So I basically given it that name. So I now have each of these census tracts with either nothing or a name of, of a nearby possible store. So at that point, I can go to my analysis page and, you know, I can like, you know, literally filter by each of those variables and it'll tell me if I say, um, let's say I'm going to open up some, you know, um, high end jewelry store or something like that. I would look for the income. Let's look for the higher, higher income folks. And this is just the population. So this is the households on the right hand side and the population on the left hand side. So I can just see how, how many people of these characteristics, this, this income live within these areas there, and you can kind of slide this around and say, okay, maybe not so much, maybe it's so much high there. Or you can, you know, just basically kind of adjust this and look for the different characteristics there, right? Um, or you can say, let's look for the college educated people or um, maybe a median age or something like that. So you can, you can basically, you know, tune in your own characteristics and slide them around. And you can see this is your like live um, estimates of how, how many people with these characteristics are within, in this case, a two mile driving distance of each of these locations. And if your store is gonna be viable, if it has, you know, at least 50,000 or whatever, or 2000 people or something, you know, within that area of those characteristics, then that would be a, a good place to open it up. Good, it's, I'm kind of running out of time here. I'm gonna jump over to my, um, if I can find it back, find it again. My summary slide. So the summary slide is basically to wrap up. The takeaways are um, uh, do, 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 do. the takeaways are the, the contour visualization. We saw that you can try this out immediately yourself. Um, it uses a tear data function. Other engines are available. You can also download the assets directly and use them yourself. And you can also publish this back to the cloud and use it immediately. The next example we, we saw was the demographics. It was completely on the cloud. No local spot fire was needed. I, I showed the example of using a tear expression to add a new calculated column, which I used in a couple different visualizations. The one I just showed, the trade analysis, the takeaway there is using um, the TIPCO Geo Analytics REST service, uh, the geo, um, the trade area, and as well as the geofencing or points and polygons to identify the census tracts. And once you've done that, You've got the identifiers. You can then create your, you know, you, you're still in spot, you're still in Spotfire, right? So you've got all the Spotfire dynamic filtering and stuff. So you can then go ahead and make your own analysis of Spotfire. So 